Hi, I'm Corey Cigarette Pace, and I'm part of the AI Cloud Advocacy team here at Microsoft. And I have the pleasure of presenting to you lesson number 16 of our Generative AI for Beginners course, covering working with open source models. In this lesson, we're going to cover what exactly are open source models, some of the benefits of why you would want to use open source models, and also understanding where we can find the different open source models that are available to build with our applications. We also have some learning goals here. We want to understand the difference between these open source models when they're helping us determine which ones to use, how to actually use these in an application, and where to find more detail about these open source models that are available. So what are exactly open source models? The standard definition that we've sort of taken from open source software would put this category of that all this information and when we were talking about large language models, whether it's the training data being publicly available, the full model weights that were used for training, the evaluation code that was also used to evaluate the training, as well as fine tuning the model, the training metrics that we determined during that process. And then last but most importantly is also an open source license in terms of being able to use this uh, as a developer uh, freely without any sort of restrictions. This is the sort of criteria that uh, an open source software would have if you translate that over to open source models. If we look at the available models that are out there now, there's actually uh, only a few models uh, that sort of fit all of these criteria perfectly. One series of models that are worth looking at is uh, the OLMO models from Allen AI. OLMO, or OLMO, is short for actually open language models. Uh, and these models are, like I mentioned, a series of models. The most latest one is 7 billion parameter open LLM, uh, which is compar comparable to, or even outperforms in some metrics, uh, with Llama 2, uh, which is a 13 billion uh, parameter model. Uh, you would also see available the data set that was used to train on, which is the Domo data set, uh, a data set that has 3 trillion tokens, uh, and it contains a lot of information in terms of both code, content, whether that be web content and books, whether that be publicly available books or even public uh, publications. As well, if you are interested, you can see the evaluation and fine tuning code that was involved in this process. Well, as I mentioned, this is a, you know, a prime example of where a model can fit all that criteria for uh, probably calling open source models. Where the community has sort of focused on lately is this world of open models where they might fit some of the criteria, but maybe not all of their criteria that if we were to translate directly into what open source software is. And this is where you'll primarily see a lot of either the model hosting or model providers out there, whether it's a Mistral, Cohere, Meta, or even a, a Hugging Face, which actually hosts uh, these models uh, when we're talking about working with open, model, open models that are there. So throughout this, the rest of this course, we're going to call this open models, uh, but this is interchangeable in terms of open source models, if that's what you prefer. So what are actually the benefits of using these open models? Well, first, they're highly customizable. Like I mentioned, some of these models have open weights, which that leads developers to be able to either fine tune or alter their behavior, which is very important when we're talking about creating these models for a specialized task, whether that's speaking different languages, speaking different programming languages, or maybe performing uh, different rule sets in terms of the way that these models operate. And they're only uh, being available because of their open sourceness. Also on the cost perspective, essentially these models on a whole or averagely is more or cheaper than the proprietary models that are typically controlled by one organization, whether that's be a cost per token when utilizing these models, uh, which is also contributed to both, both the model size which has some flexibility in terms of being where being able to host it, whether that's hosting it in the cloud or even working it locally on your machine. And like I mentioned earlier, it's the flexibility that uh, lots of provides these open source models with a lot of benefits. We are seeing a lot now where applications are determining and working with a multi-model architecture, meaning uh, that maybe a certain model performs well on a specific task or is even specialized on that specific task. And maybe that incorporates with either multiple open source models or an open source model and let's say a proprietary model. 
And working with these open source models are essential because as mentioned, uh, because of the cost and performance that they deliver, uh, is far, uh, adds a lot of benefits in terms of building applications when we're talking about scaling la later on. Also flexibility is uh, really getting the understanding of the task and their specialization, how they actually perform uh, with your task, whether it's summarization, text generation, code generation, is another really important part of working with these open source models. And once you understand that, uh, you can get great benefits of working with these models for sure. And then lastly, it's community. Uh, we're gonna talk about a bit more about Hugging Face later on, uh, but there's things like the Hugging Face Hub, uh, where you actually get a lot of different diversity in terms of fine-tuned models. Like as mentioned, you can get a fine-tuned model that speaks uh, even a language that um, specific languages or specialized in that. And it's really this concept or this idea of innovation in numbers. If everyone's sort of contributing, uh, we have a lot more freedom in terms of innovating as well as the abilities to create new tasks, new specializations that might be overlooked by working with just proprietary models. So exploring different open models is another very important question to answer because as mentioned, there's many of them out there. One way you can look at this, work with this is using the Azure AI Studio. We actually have a model catalog built into this that as I say here, currently has 1,600 plus models. I put the plus here because models are continuing to be added almost every week. Uh, but the collection also includes the Microsoft research models that are out there specifically the ones around even SARS small language models, where we talk about cost and performance as another really good key. The hugging face models that are out there available, uh, Mistral models, which we'll talk in a little bit more details, Cohere and Meta are also uh, models that are available or parts of collections in this model catalog of the Azure AI Studio. So do check it out and you'll definitely get, find the models that are most appropriate for your application there. Speaking of those models that are available, we're going to look at a little bit more in depth about a few that are available here. Uh, first one we'll look at is Llama 3. And Llama 3 comes in uh, essentially three different model sizes or model flavors, if you will. Uh, first is the Llama 3 8B, so 8 billion parameters. We also have available the Llama 370B, uh, which is 70 billion parameters, as well as the Instruct that uses it for chat completions. Uh, you will see this if you want to compare this to a proprietary model. model. It's comparable to a GPT-4 and also performs GPT-4 on some tasks. So again, as an application builder, it's really important to understand those tasks that it does outperform. Uh, so, and then you can implement that within your application to get the best benefits and performance when using this model. And one of the strong suits is that Llama 3 also operates or uh, delivers fast image generation. So if you were working with an uh, application that requires that, Llama 3 is worth uh, working with or experimenting with within your application as well. The next provider that we have is Mistral. Mistral has three currently models, open source models that are available uh, in the model catalog, which is a 7B, an 8X7B, and an NX, uh, the most recent one, 8X22B. Uh, what's unique about the 8X22B is that this has actually native function calling built in, which is the first Mistral model that has that available on an open source license. And that allows you to get essentially uh, uh, allow the model to call functions with your application based on the user's inputs uh, and actually then get those responses back and send that to the user. So this designs a very much a user friendly experience outside of just doing a chat application and expecting the response from the model. What makes this unique and why uh, the cost for this is uh, could be less than working with proprietary models, it's its unique architecture, which is this mixture of expert architecture that allows uh, essentially um, a expert, two expert neural networks to be chosen at a time and perform the, the given task uh, at, at an inference point and allows that model to run in a more lightweight fashion compared to larger models that are available. It also has things like JSON and safe mode, which controls uh, has the GIF developers a bit more control on the responses uh, that the model uh, outputs. And then lastly, we look at the Hugging Face models. So in the world of Hugging Face, there's currently 600,000 models available. Uh, we won't talk about all of them here, obviously. Uh, but one of the things I like to think about when working with Hugging Face is this idea of maybe working with AI applications, uh, sort of like Legos. Well, there's so many models that are out there that do 
either general tasks in their multimodal models, but also very excelling at a very specific task. And if you make sure that you use these models in your application uh, for those specific tasks, um, that you'll get a lot better performance and, and a cost uh, weight analysis there uh, when you're using, let's say, a, a model that's really good at translating a specific language, and then another model that's also really good at transcribing that specific language, rather than using or relying on one model to do that as well. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, there's a really strong community around Hugging Face uh, that gives you a lot of information about working with these models, whether it's, whether it's the discussion, the model cards that are available that gives you understanding of what these models are special at, specialized at, how they perform, and as mentioned, a really strong community around fine tuning as well uh, from a um, performance perspective. So if you're looking for a model to be fine tuned, you most likely find it in Hugging Face being available. So that covers a brief in working with open source models or open, uh, uh, open models. Uh, check out the full information of, about this lesson um, from on the GitHub repo, which is aka.ms slash JDI hyphen beginners, as well as other lessons covering topics, in, including like the full application lifecycle when working with generative AI applications, which is an important part when we're talking about working with open source models as they fit within that application lifecycle. Thank you and good luck.